Yo, what's up everyone? Patrick here and moving on to the next video, we have to simplify each of these two expressions here below and we have to make sure that our final answer is only going to have positive exponents. So starting with number one, we got in brackets 9x to the 5, then we got another bracket x to the negative 2 to the power of 4, and that's all to the power of 2, and that's going to be all over 2x to the negative 4, all to the power of negative 1. Now, for both of these, notice there's a lot going on here, so you may go about this in a different way. You may have a different process of working with exponents. I'm going to show you the way I would go about it, but whichever way you do go about it, make sure you're getting the exact same solutions that I'm getting at the end. So first thing I would do is if we're going to work with the numerator, you could take this outside exponent if you want. You could distribute it to all these terms. Notice they're all multiplying, but I would actually first try to simplify the bracket before dealing with that outside exponent. So I'm going to keep that big bracket. 9x to the 5, we can't really simplify that any further, but notice here we got x to the negative 2 to the power of 4, so we can multiply both of those exponents. So negative 2 times 4 would give us negative 8, and that's still going to be all to the power of 2. And then over here, we have 2x to the negative 4, and then that's all to the power of negative 1. So again, we could take this negative 1, we could distribute it to the 2, and then we could distribute it to the negative 4, like that. And that may be perhaps a quicker way, but what I'm actually going to do is because all of this is to the power of negative 1, I could take this whole thing and bring it up to the numerator to change that negative 1 to be a positive exponent. So what I would do is basically rewrite this 2x to the negative 4, but now I'm going to have a negative 1, or a, sorry, not a negative 1, a positive 1 up there, right? Just changing the sign of the exponent. Again, you can keep this down here and then do this. At the end, you're still going to simplify to the same answer. But personally, I'm just going to take this whole thing, bring it up so I could change that exponent to a positive one. And then anything to the power of positive one is just itself. So we don't even, even need these brackets here or this one. We can just leave that 2x to the negative 4 like that. Right? And so we can just simplify from here. And then what I would do is this bracket simplifies because notice that x to the 5, x to the negative 8, we could add those exponents since these are multiplying. That would be x to the negative 3, and then we have a 2 here. And then this 2, these are two separate expressions. The 2 I'm going to keep on the top, and then the x to the negative 4 I'm actually going to bring back down. And that's what I was saying before, that it might be quicker to just distribute because then when you multiply those, you would end up... If I bring back what I had written before, when you multiply these, you'd end up with that x to the 4, and then that would just stay in the denominator. So it's kind of like we brought this up, and then we brought it back down, right? Which is kind of weird to go about it like that, but the fact that it was inside the whole bracket, we did have to bring it up if we go that route. But if you went this route, then you'd have x to the 4 just left at the bottom, but then you'd have a 2 to the negative 1 at the bottom, and then that would go up. So that's where this 2 comes from. All right, so again, you're just getting to the same place, just in a different way. Now from here, there's no other way to simplify this bracket, so I would distribute the 2 now to the 9 and to the negative 3. You got to be careful, this x to the negative 3 you can't bring down yet, because it's still attached to this outside exponent, right? So you got to take care of that outside exponent and then you can bring it down to the denominator, which we're going to do in a sec. And then we got this two over here still, and then we have X to the four at the bottom. And so what would happen here is notice we would end up with, this would be 81. 
right, times 2, which would give us 162. And then this would be x to the negative 6, right? Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and then we have x to the 4. Then from here, that x to the negative 6, I would actually bring down to make it a positive exponent, like that. And then we'd have 162 over x to the 10. We could add those exponents. You could have also subtracted these, so negative 6 minus 4 would give you negative 10, and then bring that down to make it a positive. That's another way to go about it. But whichever way you do it, final answer is 162 over x to the 10. Notice that we have a positive exponent in the answer, and there's no other way to simplify that right there. All right, moving on to number two. There's no variables here, so our final answer is actually going to be all in numbers, but there may be rational exponents left. We'll see. We just have to make sure that they're going to be positive. So we got 4 to the power of 3 over 4 times 27 to the power of negative 4 over 3 times 36 to the power of negative 5 over 2, all over 4 to the negative 5 over 4 times 27 to the negative 2 times 6 to the negative 4. So again, multiple ways we can go about this. You can Try to simplify these individually, like notice how, for example, 27 to the negative 4 over 3, we can split that up to 27 to the power 1 over 3 to the power of negative 4, which would be 3 to the power of negative 4, which would be 1 over 81, right? It'd be like 1 over 3 to the power of positive 4, which would be 1 over 81. But then notice there's a 27 to the negative 2 here. So notice that there's some same base expression. So I would actually simplify those first before working on these individually. If you do want to work on them individually, you can. But then you're going to take this, change it to this. Now you're going to have a fraction within another fraction. So I just feel like taking the opportunity to, for example, simplify these. And you can simplify these because everything is multiplying. Is going to save you time in the long run. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 4 to the power of 3 over 4 and simplify it with the 4 to the negative 5 over 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take all the negative exponents and switch them to positive exponents first by just switching the numerators and denominators if needed. So the 4 to the power of 3 over 4, that's already a positive exponent. So let's keep that there. The 4 to the negative 5 over 4 I'm going to bring up. And that's going to change to a positive, like that. And then notice we have 27 negative 4 over to the power of negative 4 over 3, 27 to the power of negative 2. I'm going to switch both of those. So we would have 27 to the power of positive 2. And then at the bottom, we would have 27 to the power of positive 4 over 3. Now again, you don't have to go about it this way. Personally, I just like to change negative exponents to positive whenever I get the chance. So same thing over here. I'm going to switch these because this is 6 to the negative 4. This is 36 to the negative 5 over 2. So we would end up with 6 to the power of positive 4. And then we got 36 to the power of positive 5 over 2, like that. And then from here, we can just work on simplifying. So 4 to the power of 3 over 4 times 4 to the power of 5 over 4. Notice that we can add those exponents, right? Because they're multiplying by the same base. So what's 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4? Well, that's just going to be 8 over 4, which would just be 2. So that would end up being 4 to the power of 2. That's what these two simplified it. And then we're going to have 27 to the power of 2 over 27 to the power of 4 over 3. You can write these individually. So this would be like 27 to the power of 2 minus 4 over 3. We could subtract the exponents since they're dividing. Uh, then we have 27. This would end up being 6 over 3 minus 4 over 3 which would give us 27 to the power of, or uh, to the power of positive 2 over 3. Right? So 
and that's a positive exponent, so that stays in the numerator. So this and that simplified to that. And then we have 6 to the power of 4, and then 36 to the power of 5 over 2. So notice here, we, uh, we actually can't simplify these yet because they're different bases, but notice that the 36 we could change to have a base of 6. So we can take 36 to the power of 5 over 2 and change that to be 6 to the power of 2 to the power of 5 over 2, like that. And now notice 2 times 5 over 2, notice the 2's would cancel out, and we just end up with 6 to the power of 5. So 36 to the power of 5 over 2 is the exact same thing as 6 to the power of 5. So I just took this, switched it to 6 to the power of 5, and now notice we have the same base. Okay, so from here we'd have what's 6 to the power of 4 over 6 to the 5. Well, there's like four sixes in the numerator, five sixes in the denominator, which would leave us with one six in the denominator. Okay, another way to do this is six to the power of four minus five, which would be six to the power of negative one, which would be one over six to the power of positive one, which would be one over six. All right, so one over six, that's what these two simplify to. So we could actually take this whole expression Multiply it by 1 over 6 or just put it all over 6. And then from here, we just have to simplify these. So notice that 4 to the power of 2, what's that going to be? That's going to be 16. 27 to the power of 2 over 3, let's do on this side here. So when I get a rational exponent like this, I like to split it up like that, right? Because 1 over 3 times 2 is 2 over 3, so we're taking the 2 over 3 splitting it up. We could also do 27 to the power of 2 and then to the power of 1 over 3, like switch these up because they're multiplying so the order doesn't matter. But taking 27 to the power of 2 is just going to be a large number and then taking the third root of that, it's just going to be more of a headache, especially if you're not using a calculator on a test. So I feel like going this route is easier because the third root of 27 is just 3 and then we just have to take that to the power of 2, which would be 9. So this here simplifies to 9, and then it's all over 6, like that. And then from here, 16 times 9 would just give us, uh, what, 144? And that's going to be over 6, and then that's just going to give us 24. You could have also maybe simplified here, like the 16 over 6 or the 9 over 6, to make this fraction, in terms of smaller numbers, Whichever way you go about it, 24 is the final answer. Right, so again, these kinds of questions, you may go about them in a different way. I actually recommend you, whenever these come up in these videos, you pausing it, trying yourself, and see if you get the, uh, the same answers. You'll develop your style, your own style, as time goes on with practice, but just make sure you're getting those same final answers.